So in this session, we will discuss about uh, Carpenter alongside with Keda. So EKS has been using Carpenter from the very inception. Carpenter is basically cluster autoscaler. So in EKS world, there are um, defined clusters where your pods are running. So what Carpenter does is it has a quite a number of different feature, but in a nutshell, it's a cluster autoscaler. So if a scaling is required, if there are pending pods in your ecosystem, Carpenter will pitch in, go and create new uh, nodes and then provision your pending pods in that node. That has been since a very long time. What uh, with this particular session, I want to introduce Keda alongside with Carpenter because Carpenter does really good job in uh, just provisioning environment so that the pending pods can be run. But what we have missing over here is uh, the scaling aspect in respect to not on the construct of matrix, which is normally utilized like your CPU and memory usage. Uh, so default Kubernetes use your uh, scaling based on your matrix or you can send in custom matrix but these matrix or custom matrix are more about like your utilization of your nodes or utilization of your pods uh, what i am trying to get in the space is uh, if we have an external component where uh, where the incoming tasks are growing that should be the factor of scaling now coming to our use case so in this case, we have a user who has a banking transaction that goes into SQS queue. In a normal world, that transaction goes into a queue. From the queue, it basically gets into, uh, it's pulled into our existing capacity, which is nodes and pods, running pods, and then from there, it goes into DynamoDB. Now, let's say if that uh, incoming transaction scales because you know, a lot of people are now using it, the queue is getting choked, but our uh, transactions are still in the same state uh, going through the same existing capacity uh, and it will not scale till the uh, capacity existing capacity capacity is burned out on the memory or cpu utilization side of things so now what Kera does is it basically key, it has a monitoring aspect so it basically keeps a check on the queue depth so um, sqs is one of the component trigger component there is a lot, large variety of different components which you can introduce, include with keda and make your trigger based on those components which can be RabbitMQ, which can be your dynamo db streams it can be uh, quite a number of external third-party products as well as other cloud vendor products as well so over here once this uh, incoming transaction increases keda checks it basically then goes to inbuilt kubernetes hpa so it doesn't use anything fancy uh, of itself it uses the kubernetes uh, hpa and then request for provisioning pods so it there are now pods in the pending state now this is the perfect situation for carpenter to pitch in because carpenter is really good in provisioning uh, the pending pods and that's where carpenter comes in checks that they are pending pods it goes and provisions new in instances and nodes and that in the those nodes your pods are running the good part about carpenter is it provision uh, different nodes or uh, different uh, instances in your cluster very specific to the size and, and capacity requirement of your pod so it's uh, there's a lot of optimization which is available in carpenter now those incoming choked messages can be easily flown out and then the transaction can be improved so this gives a high performance uh, experience to the to the in, end user and the and the entire solution is now very much scalable based on the task now coming back into our demo, so there are a couple of different pieces in this uh, in this demo environment. So let me quickly walk you through that. So in my in my environment, I have a EKS cluster with Keda installed. Um, this is the queue which simulates to the queue I was showing you in the PowerPoint presentation where the incoming messages will be coming in. And this is just to present that we have currently a couple of different nodes which are supporting my EKS cluster. There are around like four nodes. And then I have a DynamoDB database, which is uh, again, going back to the presentation, that's the destination where my pods will pull the message from the queue, send it to the DynamoDB database. So that's the destination. It's all empty at this stage, and I don't have any messages in my queue as well. Now coming to the real meat of this uh, demo, so this is uh, the real area. So what you're seeing on the screen is on the left side, I have uh, my EKS cluster, uh, which I'm, and the number of nodes. So at this stage, it shows three. The reason why it was showing four was uh, there was one node which I have provisioned for uh, other tasks. But yeah, three of those uh, instances in EC2 are basically used by this uh, cluster. On the right side, I have that one pod, which is basically pulling the message from the queue and then sending it to DynamoDB. 
in the lower left section, this is basically my uh, simulated script. So I'm trying to simulate uh, the scaling side of like number of people setting up the transaction. So this script is just sort of a simulator. It will pump message into my queue. And on the right side, what I have is uh, I have just uh, some dashboard from CloudWatch. So as you can see, this is uh, the left side. Uh, the first uh, report is more about the pods and their usage and capacity. The second is the SQS queue depth. So the messages when they will be pumped, this queue will increase. And then the third is the nodes and their uh, utilization. So what will vis be visible during the demo is we will start to see number of pods scaling and we will see quite a number of pods when the messages are pumped and then at the same time on the threshold of the three uh, different nodes like the amount of pods capacity for these three nodes are reached to the benchmark then Keda will pitch in and then it will start uh, Carpet will pitch in and install, uh, start creating new instances to basically uh, initiate those pods. So let's quickly run this and see things in action. So yeah, I'll just run the scripts. So my messages are now being pumped and immediately you should start to see some uh, some particular pods being provisioned over here. So not too long, it should start to be visible. Uh, the thing with the queue uh, and the dashboard is it will take some time because CloudWatch receives. Yeah, so now as you can see, there are a couple of pods. So there are four pods which got uh, provisioned and then this will continue to scale. So if I refresh this, uh, yeah, I might have to go back into my uh, into my dashboard. Uh, no, into my SQS. So if I come back to my SQS and if I pull this, uh, you can see I have 151 messages, pending messages to be processed. So obviously uh, it will continue to scale. At this stage, I have said that if the queue depth is more than two, then the new pod should be initiated. So now there are around like 16 pods which are uh, currently supporting um, pulling the messages from the queue and sending it to DynamoDB. So let's go back into our DynamoDB. And if we get there, uh, if I refresh this, now I should have a couple of messages. So I have a couple of messages which are now in DynamoDB. So end-to-end -end flow is working at this stage. Now we have reached to 54 at the each um, node. I have around 29, 25, 28 pods which are running and this is continuing to scale. So this will reach to a point where there will be pending pods because these three nodes will not be able to take in. Now, if I go back, uh, yep, so now we are seeing a lot of pending pods and because that's 29 is the upper threshold. Now you can see a new instance uh, in node has been added. So if we go into a EC2 console, we should see three different instances getting provisioned. So if I go back, uh, okay, so if I go back into my EC2 and if I, so we have four, three were used, now we have eight. So there are four more, uh, instances created if i come back over here so you can see one two three four five so there's around like five uh, in, uh six instances which are uh, in provision state and two so there are around like three are active so yeah this is uh, dynamically growing so when i flip screens it will be different so if i come over here now i have 10 so and the good part is you if you go into the spot request you can see that uh, these instances are coming live so there are instances which are coming live uh, from the spot because that's what i've configured in the carpenter side to use spot instances but you can use on demand as well and there are like um, four into six instances which are st still in the initialization state so that way it will be read uh, yeah so as you can see we have around like 282 messages at this stage and uh, 282 pods running to pull the messages there are a couple of pending pods so that's why the uh, inst nodes are still getting uh, provisioned and that's how uh, it is uh, it is basically uh, uh, scaling now if you can see in the queue i have 16 and then there are a number of uh, messages which are visible are like like uh, 250 and 529 uh, we can see the pods they are still pretty good in the usage so there's not much exhausted 4 percent cpu 37 percent memory our nodes are also not going that bad it's like two uh, uh, it's going around like uh, yeah, so each of these are pretty much 1.9 and something that's uh, UCPU utilization. Now, so what I want to show with this is nothing is burned out, still our scaling is happening. So it's 
pretty much driven based on the queue depth and uh, so amount of tasks which is pending is basically driving our scale and that's what the intent is now let me shut it down so what will happen in due course of time is once the queue is basically cleaned up and we don't have uh, much item to be processed from the queue the pod will start to terminate and once the termination starts uh, that will reduce to one pod because that's the default pod size and on the uh, node as well once the pod are delete terminated so will the node be so we will have the uh, ramp down happening as well so this is a very graceful model of how it ramps up and ramps down and that's a very good experience so uh, it takes some time to to basically uh, dequeue the messages and then obviously terminate. So uh, the pod termination is pretty quick. It's a couple of seconds, but yeah, the instant terminated terminations takes some time. So what, uh, we'll just, I'll pause the video for now. Once we start to see the termination, I'll resume it again. So now as we can see that uh, the termination has started. So because the queue has, queue size has gone to zero, uh, that's why there are no more pending messages in the queue and the queue depth is, is under control. So the messages are, so the pods are basically now terminating to basically offload or uh, scale down the environment. So there are terminations happening. You will see that even in the node level, you will see that. So we are having a drop now, uh, even in these two nodes, number of pods, and so is the termination uh, has initiated. Now. This is a pretty like graceful model because uh, everything started from the lowest possible denominator at the pod level. And then when the pod threshold was reached by the number of nodes available, then the nodes also scaled. So we are now looking at best of both worlds because the scaling is happening based on the amount of task pending. And then also it is not getting limited because we don't have the node capacity because node or the cluster capacity is also being scaled by Carpenter. So it's a mix and match and uh, good avenue. So once we have a pretty much good number of pods terminated, then we'll start to see these nodes also uh, dying eventually. And that would, uh, that and it's, it's really good in respect to the overall cost experience and uh, cost side of things because uh, we are not paying for over provisioned environment and also we are not getting challenged because our environment is under provision and we have a lot of load coming in so it's a perfect use case of a cloud scale scenario where uh, based on demand the scaling is uh, happening and and then once the demand is gone then the scaling uh, goes away and we are um, basically scaling down everything so once the ter termination of node starts i'll, I'll uh, resume again I'll pause it for now. So now we have reached to a point where we have only one pod running. So eventually we'll start to see the nodes also uh, shutting down and getting uh, like a decommissioned so that we can, um, uh, the scaling aspect has uh, gone off. Let's go to the EC2 portal. So scaling down should initiate at any point of time because Carpenter would be visualizing, viewing this and obviously once it sees uh, there are no pending boards, it also decommissions the environment. So let's get back to EC2s and uh, yeah, it's still nothing. I think it should start. So uh, at this stage, you can see there are quite a number of pods which are uh, still active. So there are six, five, and this counts so much more than one that you can see. Now, the reason for that is because uh, there are a lot of different uh, monitoring components which I have installed. So there is a Fluent D, there is a container, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so now, okay, that was good. So now you can see, they, if you did see that there was a red uh, node which was being terminated so uh, I was talking about we there I have installed container insights so yeah, AWS container insights pod are also running so that's why uh, we are seeing all these additional so if I go into the namespaces and if I say all yep so if I say all then I should see all the pods uh, running at the stage so you can see there are a lot of CloudWatch uh, pods which are running, these are basically sending the telemetries. We have fluent bit pods, uh, which are sending the container insights. So yeah, and then we have Carpenter and Keda pods. So yeah, there are quite a number of pods which are running. That's why we are, but as you can see now, 
we have scaled down from 13 odd uh, in nodes to eight, and then it will continue to scale down. So yeah, this was uh, a really good um, like model. This is a very good model I can imagine for um, scaling based on specific uh, specific uh, task based uh, like queue or something like where you are having pending tasks. Now, what are the different avenues where Keda can help? So if I come back to my deck. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, there are quite a number of different triggers uh, or components which can help in triggering the Keda, which eventually can give you the same experience. From the AWS world, we have uh, ActiveMQ, we have Kafka, Apache Kafka, uh, we have uh, CloudWatch, DynamoDB Streams, Kinesis Streams, SQS, so pretty much covers quite a lot of different. And then we have things like uh, it also covers uh, Redis, it has uh, MS SQL and stuff. And if you come to a point where you can't find the specific trigger which you are after, it's a CNCF open source product. They have a very simple defined interface which you can implement, give a pull request, and they normally ingest that. And you can use it from the Keda source, or you can also build it locally, and then you can use your own uh, trigger custom triggers. So yeah, that's a that's a good um, solution. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Thanks.